In this video, we're going to go over the payback rule. And the payback rule is another way to evaluate projects that we may take on to maximize value for the shareholders. It's an alternative to the net present value way that we went over in the previous video. And it's a lot easier to implement than the net present value, but it's also going to come with its own flaws, as we'll see at the end of the video. Now, to implement this rule, we're going to have to find something called the payback period of a project. And the payback period is basically the amount of time it takes to recover our initial investment. So let's illustrate that through an example. Let's say a machine costs us $20,000 today to buy and it's going to generate $5,000 per year. So showing this example in a timeline, negative 20,000 is spent in time zero today and then this machine is going to generate $5,000 per year. It wasn't mentioned how many years it's going to be so I just assume for now I just wrote out five. So let's calculate what the payback period will be, the amount of time it takes to recover our initial investment. So our initial investment is $20,000. So the first year we make $5,000. So in total, we've just made this $5,000. In year two, we make another $5,000. So in total, how much have we made in year two up until that point with this machine? Well, we've made $10,000 because we include that first year cash flow as well. Then in the third year, we make another $5,000. If we add up all the cumulative cash flows, so far we have made $15K. And then in year four, we make another $5,000, add up all the cumulative cash flows up until that point, we have made $20,000. So notice that at this point, we have recovered our initial investment with our cumulative cash flows. So the payback period for this project is four years because at the four year mark, we have recovered our $20,000 investment with the cumulative positive cash flow so far. So the payback rule is basically we have to take the payback period and compare it to a cutoff that the company has given. So if the payback period is less than the cutoff that the company has given, we would accept the project. So for example, in this case, let's say that the company says that we will only accept projects that have a payback period of less than five years. So we have to recover our initial investments in less than five years. And if they're recovered in less than five years, then we can accept it. Well, this specific project, because we recover our investment in four years, the four year payback period is less than the cutoff of five years, we would accept this project. Now let's say that the company had a cutoff of three years. So we have to uh, recover our initial investment in three years or less. Well, we would reject this project because we're recovering the cash flow in four years and that would be greater than our cutoff of three years, so then we would reject it. So all we do is we take a cutoff that a company has given, it'll be given in the question whenever you're dealing with a payback rule, and you have to compare the payback period of the project to that cutoff. If it's less than the cutoff, we accept the project. If it's greater, we reject it. So let's do another example, a little bit more of a complex one where the cash flows are a little bit more uneven. So let's say a machine costs us $20,000 and it generates 12,000, 6,000, and 5,000 in years one, two, and three respectively. What is the payback period gonna be for this machine? So let's show these cash flows in a timeline. So in time zero, we have to spend $20,000, so that's gonna be a negative cash flow to us. So I put negative 20,000 here in uh, short form. Year one, we're going to make 12,000, year two, 6,000, and then year three, 5,000. So how long is it gonna to take to recover that initial investment? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the payback period. So in year one, we made $12,000. So up until that point, it's just that positive cash flow that we made. Then in year two, we have made $6,000. So cumulatively, we have made 18 thousand if we add that first year cash flow that we made as well so up until year two we have recovered eighteen thousand dollars and then in year three we make five thousand dollars so cumulatively speaking we have made twenty three thousand so by year three we have recovered twenty three thousand dollars but notice that we have to recover only twenty thousand 
and that's in between 18 and 23,000. So what would the payback period be then? Well, because we recover that 20,000 in between years two and three, we know the payback period is gonna be two point something, but what is this portion gonna be? So notice how up until the second year, we've accumulated $18,000, we've recovered $18,000, but we need to recover 20,000. So to find that decimal value, we can just use this formula here. So how much is left to recover? Well, to get from 18,000 to 20, we have to still recover $2,000. And then we divide that by the next year cash flow. And the next year cash flow is this 5,000. So this $5,000 is happening over a gradual period of time. So when we divide those, we would get 0.4. So that 0.4 goes here. So it takes us 2.4 years to recover. So if we show this on the timeline, to recover this $20,000, it takes us one, two, and then 0.4 years to get to that $20,000, which is right here. And to get to that, we just prorated that $2,000 that's left over that $5,000 that happens in the next year. And then when we do that, we get 0.4, so the payback period is 2.4 years. And to finish off the video, let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of that payback rule. So some advantages is that it's easy. As we saw in the previous example, it's a lot easier to implement than the NPV rule. And another advantage is that it's biased towards liquidity and short-term projects. So what that means is that the payback rule is trying to recover the cash flows of the initial investment as quickly as possible. So it's trying to get those cash flows or the bulk of the cash flows to recover that initial investment in the beginning of the project. And then if it passes a certain cutoff point, then we reject those projects. So it's biased towards short-term projects. And that's good because longer-term projects, the longer-term of a cash flow a project has, the more uncertain the cash flows are in that longer period of time. So if we can get a lot of the cash flows in the short term, then that is good because those cash flows are more certain, they have less risk. Now, the disadvantages to the payback period is that it ignores cash flows after the cutoff. So it can be seen, as we mentioned here, as an advantage, but it could also be a disadvantage because let's say a project takes some time to get you those cash flows. So let's say that in the first couple of years, you're not gonna be recovering that investment, but maybe after a certain period of time, that project is gonna start generating you a lot of cash flows. And we're gonna be ignoring those kind of projects because the cash flows are gonna be potentially after the cutoff. But that may not necessarily be a good idea to ignore them because perhaps they will add value to us. So that relates to the second disadvantage, it's biased against long-term projects. And then the third disadvantage is that it ignores risk and the time value of money. If you look back at the examples we did, we didn't discount those cash flows that happen in the future at all. And that's important because then we are ignoring the interest that we can potentially make with that investment, putting that money elsewhere. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about a rule called the discounted payback rule. So it's very similar to the payback rule, but now we're gonna take, uh, take care of this disadvantage here. We're not gonna be ignoring the time value of money. So that rule will go over in the next video. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.